once you know it in your head when you begin to receive promptings from the Holy Spirit consistent with what we have studied you will know that it is a rise of the reign of power or the rise of the reign of, of, of authority that is coming upon your life and God is beginning to galvanize you so that you can be an accurate kingdom functionary hallelujah so number one power power is gift based look look chapter 10 verse 19 power is gift based it's a gift, it's a gift. all right and I hope you know there is nothing you do to work for a gift a gift is given to you it's not something you work for it's not even something you deserve it's something that is handed out to you that's how power is in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19 the Bible says behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you power is a gift have you ever received a gift before did you know that the person wanted to give you a gift you never knew until the person handed it out then you knew what the person had given power is a gift if you go to the book of acts chapter 1 verse 8 the bible says this is jesus speaking he said behold well he said ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth power is gift based and that is the reason why when jesus was giving us insight into how to identify people that believe in him the basic signs that identifies a believer are power signs because power is a gift that god gives every citizen of his kingdom so if you are born again here you have a potential for power if you have received the baptism in the holy spirit he said ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you indicative of the fact that the carrier and the dispenser of the power of god happens to be the holy ghost the reason why god gave you the holy ghost is because god wants you to be a creature of power that is your true design have you ever seen somebody that was so afraid of life and had to run to the devil to get some amulet as a means of protection? Have you seen that before? You have never seen that before. It means you grew up in Abuja. Hallelujah. Because the average mortal man knows that he has need for power. God that designed you knows you need power. So he did not allow you to work for it. He gave you as a gift. It's part of your working equipment. Power is gift based. You get it to that level? All right, so if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, I can die Gandas in a few minutes to show you how to translate the anointing of the Spirit that came upon you into the anointing of power. There is a transition that must take place because God made available to you baptism in the Holy Spirit. You are immersed in the Holy Ghost. And the evidence that you were interchanged in the Holy Ghost is that you began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you utterance. Are you with me? But it is not speaking in tongues that God gave you. It's not speaking in tongues. He said, you receive. What did he say you receive? Power. He said, this power will become operational after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. It means the starting material for power is Holy Ghost baptism. Right? When you begin to exercise yourself in prayer, exercise yourself in fasting you do it frequently you do it intentionally you do it deliberately you begin to notice some things your appetite for sin will begin to die to dry up because if god's glory is going to manifest through your life i need to tell you that the back end of glory is holiness and anywhere that you cannot find holiness you will not find the glory of god the bible says holy 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 is the lord the whole earth is full of his glory Anytime glory manifests, it's because there's holiness in the background. When you begin to exercise yourself in praying in tongues for long hours, some appetites that the devil normally exploits in getting you to wander in the wilderness of sin will be punctured. There are many reactions that will take place because you yield to the spirit of prayer. It begins to configure, it begins to calibrate, it begins to work out a protocol, a protocol that will undo every kind of thing that satan is likely to exploit in your life he begins to undo the power power of something 
a lot of cleansing begins to take place. And it's a process. And that's why Jesus said, tarry ye in Jerusalem. It's a process. And when this process is accomplished, then the pure stream of the power of God will begin to flow through your vessel. So if you have received the Holy Ghost, it means you have received the potential for power. Then you need to pay the price by aligning with the space of power in order for your vessel to become one of the vessels that will become a channel for that kingdom utensil. Please help me tell your neighbor, power is gift-based. On the flip side, side, authority is relationship-based. Authority is what? Relationship-based. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. The Bible says, And he ordained the twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to pray. The principal reason for which the twelve were supposed to be, the principal assignment of the twelve was to be with to be. That's how, why he ordained them. He ordained them for what? Be with him. You are not with me. I say he ordained them for what? To be with him. And then he said that he might send them to preach. That one is a probability. Sending them to preach is a probability. But their being with him is the reason for which he ordained them. It means when you begin to establish a relationship with Jesus, a time might just come if you have lingered with him long enough that he chooses to delegate some authority to you to speak for him. You see, if he is going to send you to preach, if he's going to send you to represent him, he gives you the equipment of power and authority so that it will be obvious that you are an authentic messenger that has been deployed from headquarters. Meanwhile, the reason why he ordained you is not to preach, but to what? Be with him. Now, a lot of us go to seminaries. I'm not against uh, seminary because I also attended one myself. But I can tell you that the seminary doesn't produce a, a, a pastor. In fact, you, can, you may lose your salvation in a seminary if you are not careful. Hallelujah. As wonderful as it is for you to visit a seminary and be equipped, that exercise doesn't produce a pastor. It's being with Jesus. Having a functional relationship with Jesus. If I tell you when I woke up today, you will not believe. And I prayed from that time till now. I was just released briefly to come do this work and to come back to where I left. Oh, preaching is 10% of ministry. The real thing is being with, if you get busy with Oh, there's so much money. Ah, you will go to the field one day and Satan will, will add you to the congregation of Zebulon and Naphtali. <laughs> that they might be with him. That he might send them to what? To pray. See, authority will arise from relationship. And the kind of authority we're talking about here, it is you see, it is Jesus that has the power. Huh? Have you heard that? For thine is the power. For thine is the kingdom. So you are going to carry power to the extent to which Jesus is willing to delegate you with power. So the source of authority is relationship. When he can trust you to represent him without, without, without obscuring his intent. Then he sends you. But that sending is going to derive from the platform of being with him. Exactly. I say exactly. Sometimes you pray. Pray for so many hours, like I did a few days ago. Prayed for two days and Jesus did not speak to me. I said, well, um, yours is the power. <laughs> Nobody can quarrel with you. But let it be on record, I made an attempt to reach you. So that was the text message I dropped. That text message was more powerful than two days prayer. 
he responded, he responded to that text message. He didn't respond to two days of he didn't even answer. Now, if you don't, if you don't know the protocol of being with him, you, you may think that if you do one dry fasting, he will answer you. You, you will clear your doubt. That there's nothing you do that can make him talk. He will only talk if he wants to talk. So if you are not used to waiting, you will take off like a tornado without his voice. And you will meet Satan shortly. He ordained the twelve that they might be with him. Exactly. Right. Another scripture to buttress that fact is Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. But when he pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden immediately I confess not with flesh and blood you may not understand what this man is saying when you give your life to Christ I don't know your experience but when Paul gave his life to Christ he went on honeymoon with Jesus in the wilderness of Arabia he left home to the wilderness for three and a half years in search of the God that appeared to him on the way to Damascus can you see why Paul's ministry was different from the ministry of the other apostles he knew from the start that his preoccupation was to be with Jesus so he left the countryside he left the busy cities like Lagos like Abuja and went to a place like Yola Damaturu. and he was there for three and a half years on honeymoon with Jesus the first thing that he realized on his journey was that Jesus wanted to reveal himself through him until he came to that knowledge he remained in the wilderness then it became obvious that Jesus wanted to reveal himself through the Apostle Paul and the moment he, he captured that insight it was so strong he didn't need a confirmation if you become such a powerful man and we cannot trace in your story when you were in Arabia it means that what you are manifesting a power doesn't have a re relationship platform you are fake when you find a man are you with me you are not with me you see these are the days where is the most that were preaching in the bush have moved to church so I need to tell you a few things when you find a man that is manifesting the power of God and he doesn't have the revelations of God because the first thing that God did to Paul was that God began to reveal himself in him when you begin to encounter God the first thing that God the difference between a prophesier and a prophet is that God will use a prophesier to speak for him but God will reveal himself to a prophet the first thing that God did to Apostle Paul was that he began to reveal himself to him so when you see a man whose revelation of God is so little but his manifestations are huge Ah, you need to question that man. I remember there was a man that uh, used to do some stuff in Lagos. Um, he had no revelation of God, but there were manifestations. You don't need to go too far to know who is fake. Paul said that God was interested in revealing his son in him. So when you tarry, Jesus will reveal himself to you. It is after he has revealed himself to you that he can send you to preach his kingdom. If you don't know Jesus, then any power that you are manifesting is not authentic. Because the protocol is that the intimacy and the relationship you have with Jesus is going to qualify you for revelations of Jesus. Oh my God. Are you with me? I know Jesus. I know him. He never empowers anybody that doesn't know him. When you find someone that cannot reveal him, demonstrating power, you need to question that. Paul said, Jesus was, God was willing to reveal his son in him. It's a relationship issue. When your relationship with him is strong, it is obvious that a preaching aspect also will follow. The preaching aspect doesn't come before the relationship aspect. He said, when I discovered 
that it was the intention of the Father to reveal His Son in me that I might preach. May the Lord reveal His Son in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That I might preach. I confess not with flesh and with blood. Relationship is going to change everything you do. The way you pray will change if you have a relationship with Jesus. The way you relate with people will change if you have a relationship with Jesus. The way you relate with money will change if you have a relationship with Jesus. The way you relate with the opposite sex will change if you have a relationship with Jesus. There are several things that your pastor will never tell you, but Jesus will tell you. The fact that you have a pastor doesn't mean you don't need to know Jesus personally because your pastor cannot tell you what Jesus will tell you. And meanwhile, if you become a billionaire and, and maybe your pastor is afraid to tell you that, that woman, who is that woman there? When you go to Jesus, he will, he will not be afraid of you. May the Lord give you understanding. So a lot happens when a man establishes a relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two, power is boisterous. Power is noisy. Power is explosive. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. The story of Philip, when he went to the city of Samaria. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The entire city was affected by Philip's efforts because there were things to hear in Philip's ministry. There were also things to see. He had audio and visual. Just before you know it, someone in a wheelchair has, 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 is on his feet. There was hearing and there was sight because power is explosive. And the entire city gave him. Makodi has been too quiet for too long. There is a way to bring holy noise. It is when power is unleashed. And I tell you the truth, these are the days of power. Oh, you see, Satan, Satan, his time is up. The Bible says that people heard and saw the things that happened. I used to say, even though power is explosive, authority is judicial. Have you ever gone to court and you see the judge slapping someone? The power of justice is not, is not boisterous, but it's binding. Power comes from the realm of the spirit to effect a change in the natural. Are you with me? But authority goes into the realm of the spirit, causes a displacement. And the effect of the displacement that is caused in the realm of the spirit becomes visible. Power is explosive. Authority is judicial. Luke chapter 13 verse 11 to 16. Authority is judicial in nature. It's judicial. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and in no wise and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to walk in them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. This is the justification that Jesus gave for that miracle. And the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox or his ass from the store and lead them away to watering? They said yes. And now say, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these eighteen years, been loose from this bound on the Sabbath. This was his explanation and justification for that miracle. It was judicial that according to the justice system of heaven, this woman is a daughter of Abraham. And because she's a daughter of Abraham, she ought to be loose. 
So what Jesus was saying was that the position of the justice system of heaven is that he's saying lose. And so he just featured as a law enforcement agent to prosecute the will of heaven concerning the woman's life. Authority is judicial. Power is explosive, is boisterous, is noisy. Authority doesn't necessarily need to be noisy. Because how did he exercise authority? He says, Satan. He said, woman, thou, and what? Loosed from thy infirmity. And that was it. Justice found the ground to express his intention. And the Bible says that immediately the woman was made straight. Somebody will be made straight tonight, tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Immediately. That means that the authority could not be contested. Immediately. That means nothing could stand against that which Jesus had spoken. Immediately. Because the judicial basis for the manifestation of justice was in place. An authority is bringing to the table the services of a law enforcement agent. Satan has been hanging in your family legally for a very long time. The reason why the deliverance has not come is because there's no law enforcement agent that has the authority of God to prosecute the perspective of justice. But I tell you tonight, I tell you tonight, something that Satan cannot handle, it will come from heaven. Something that is beyond the bondage is going to find expression and Satan will have no hiding place. Immediately she was loosed from my infirmity. Ah. Number three. Power is God's conquering strategy. If there is a place that is under the dominion of the kingdom of darkness and God wants to conquer that location, what he does is that he deploys power. Oh, they say it is infested by witchcraft. No one there can buy a car. No one there can build a house. The situation is like that because there's no man of power in the neighborhood. But today you are going to be commissioned to be the prophet of that family, to be the prophet of that household. Because God is going to use you as a law enforcement agent. There's an explosive that will come out of your spirit. Uh, suddenly, 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 you will discover that the laws that bound the entire community stood only because of the absence of a man of power, a woman of power. If he wants to conquer, he sends power. But if he wants to rule, he rules by authority. Please help me tell your neighbor, he conquers with power, but he rules by authority. All right, let us see a scripture or a few scriptures that reveal that he conquers with power. Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3. He says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. If he wants to conquer his power, then the enemies will do what? We submit. Psalm 79 verse 11. Let the sign of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those appointed to die. There are several people that died not because it was their time. There was no power to preserve them. Today, you will be preserved in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, preserve those that are appointed to die. Let me show you authority. He conquers with power, but he rules with authority. Mark chapter 1, verse 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he on clean spirits and the, the key word there is obey. Obey. Before you gave your life to Christ on the crusade ground when you came and 
conviction was hit your heart like a bullet. That was power. But the day you submit to Jesus Christ, he begins to rule you with his authority. Because the nature of the fallen man is a nature of rebellion. So when God begins to rule within your heart, the devil walking through the flesh will attempt again and again to violate the authority of God. Are you with me? Then God will register his displeasure. If you walk in the flesh, he will register his displeasure. If you are beginning to become intimate with God, you will not want God to be angry with you. You will go and beg him. He will accept you. And then you will not know that that sin, you cannot, you cannot live in that sin and expect to have a relationship with God. So you need to make a decision. Don't let it go. It will pain you that your girlfriend has gone. You will feel lonely in the night. But that's the price you need to pay for something that is better. If your work with God has no price, it means you are not working with God. What you are doing is sociology. Hallelujah. If it's a work of the kingdom, you are going to lose something. And then you now say, okay, I, want to, I don't want to grieve him again. Then the other day, your younger sister makes you angry. You woes her, woes her. If you touch her here, she goes down. Then the Holy Ghost, will, he will cry inside. Ah. In the evening, he went and said, you see, this anger is of the devil. I'm sorry. Because you want a relationship with him. Next time, you will not need to practice slapping again. Because you know what it will create. And after six months, you will know that the, the, there's, there's a change that is being registered in your conduct. Just because you have something with him, you don't want to lose. You don't know that he is beginning to rule you. His nature is beginning, you are, you are aligning with, with the pulse of his nature. And he's beginning to govern you according to the life that he gave you. He conquers with power, but he rules with authority. A time comes in your work with God when Jesus will say to you, resign your job and come work for me full time. Because you have worked with him for a long time. That will not even look like a sacrifice. That will, that's what happened to me. My salary was 1.2 million when Jesus said resign. Okay. <laughs> yes. 1.2 million every month. Jesus said, leave that job. I said, you know what I have with you is more than a job. Meanwhile, it was him. On the 13th of January, 2003, he sent an angel to me in the place of prayer. The bean was a creature that looked like a like Coke bottle. Twisted glass and there was light, illumination, blaring from within it. That was where he revealed to me that I will have a job on the 13th of January 2000. So it was he was the one that gave me the job. And on the 28th of August 2020, he said the job has expired. He said, Come with me. I want to take you to the nations of the world. You cannot combine that with your job. That was how I resigned. You know what? Because I don't want any problem with you. He rules with authority. And because I obeyed him, he decided to put an additional grace. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if I shout or I say like this. Blindness, go. It will, it will, it will hear me. <laughs> oh, my yako silo kobe. kapalambo. He rules with authority. He rules with what? Finally, I need to say something quickly before I begin to round up. The Bible acknowledges that Satan has power. Please, don't, don't forget this. Satan what? Oh, you don't believe that? Do you still... Are you there? Luke 10. Luke 10, I think, 18. Okay, go to 17. Luke 10, 17. Okay, let me read from you. No, go to 19. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. It means Satan has power. And Jesus acknowledges that Satan has power. But you know what Satan doesn't have? He doesn't have authority. Because authority is relationship based. You are the one that is going to be responsible for giving Satan the authority he will use to 
destroy your life. That's why the Bible says, give Satan what? No place. Oh, you're not with me. You're not with me. Let me try again, if you will get it. I say the Bible acknowledges that Satan has power, but the Bible doesn't recognize Satan having authority. If Satan has authority in your family, it's because someone gave him the place. Are you here? Oh, do you still remember that Satan is called in the Bible the prince of this world? What's the meaning of that? Yeah? The prince of this world. Why prince? Bro, why is he prince? Well, you have not thought about it. A prince is a king without territory. Right? He doesn't have territory. It is only the territory you make available that becomes his ground of oppression. So Apostle Paul says, give Satan no place because he should not have authority over your life. Only Jesus should. If, if, if what he, he has against you, if he launches his power against you because you are under the authority of God, that power will have no effect. The power of darkness will only have effect on your life if Satan has a place. So tonight, the first thing we need to do is to ensure that Satan has no place. After that, we will be in for miracles, for signs and wonders. Rise up on your feet. Give Satan no place. When you start becoming serious about breaking the hold of the power of Satan in your family, then the issue of whether you are saved or not becomes a powerful matter. Because as long as you are not saved, it means that you have offered Satan a ground for him to exercise his authority. If you are in this place tonight and you have not given your life to Christ, you've been coming to church wondering, but there's no relationship between you and God. It means that you have deliberately decided to set yourself up for your life to become a spaceman that Satan can walk on. Before we move into the miracle session, I want to give you an opportunity to ensure that Satan has no ground in your ecosystem to practice his new technology. So if you are there and you know that you have not turned over your life to Christ, you are still in charge. And you want to respond to Jesus tonight, you want to put your right hand on your chest. I want to give my life to Christ. I know now that walking with Jesus is the answer. So I want to turn over my life to Christ. Hold about it. Don't allow Satan win the argument over your soul. He said, today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. When he calls you, do not despise his call. Right hand on your chest and left hand up. We want to ensure that Satan has no place. If your hand is lifted, leave your seat and come to the altar here so that we can drop your sin drop the bodies of your life away. Let Jesus, the saves, the save, take away sin from your life. You will need to rebel against the devil to see the salvation of God. Give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. The days of sin are over. True men are those that have decided to serve the Lord Jesus. And if you are listening to me online and you are still a ragamuffin, you are still a rolling, a rolling stone, you are still an irema, give Satan no place. There's a call for you to turn over your life to Jesus. We rebel against the devil. We will not serve the devil. 
even though maybe your ancestors served darkness, you can make a choice. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're in the front here, just begin to ask him for mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I've been running my affairs. I've been running my life. But I want to surrender to you today. Blot out my sin. Write my name in the book of life. Oh. Oh, mean business with him as you speak to him. Take over. Take over from today. Take over from today. Be my savior. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Can you repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I accept that I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. Have mercy on me. Wash me with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the power. Give me the grace to live for you all the days of my life. Any covenant that I entered into knowingly or unknowingly. Tonight, I ask, let his power over my soul be broken. I will serve you from this day henceforth. In the name of Jesus. Where's Pastor Tony? Now, see that pastor there waving to you. Just see him for two minutes and then join the miracle service. Can you go that way? Pastor Tony will. He's your host. Two minutes and you join the miracle service. Hallelujah. Now it's time for miracles. We want to start by a prayer point. Three prayer points, then I will pray for the congregation. And Pastor Tony, please ensure that you finish with the people before the miracle service. Jesus will do something in this place tonight. Now, first prayer point. If you have noticed patterns of darkness in your family, patterns of wickedness in your family, and you are trusting God for intervention tonight, I want you to begin to mention those things to God and say, God, oh Lord, we reject this, we reject that, we reject this. We reject. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you talk to God right now? He will honor your, your voice. He will honor your voice here today. He will honor your voice here today. Anything that you have seen, it is a pattern that is not biblical. It is a manifestation of the presence of darkness in your family. Talk to him right now and say, Lord, let this symptom come to an end. Let it come to an end. Let it come to an end. Let it come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there untimely death? People die like chickens. Have you seen strange sicknesses coming on people? Tonight, you can begin to address it. You can begin to talk to God about it. Because there will be salvation this night. There will be miracles this night. God will break yokes. He will upturn the situation in many families. Yes, this is the night of grace and power. God will be exalted. Jesus will be exalted in your family. Oh, I can't hear you. Ofesimanteli akoperakatala. Mezoseka brisko fetali. Yanto menis kete brekasko belamina kantela. Shamantoria kabesko vreska bataku belamina. Rai kampas katala bon sheke tabo samina telia. Ibra makate koske tamiko batuata. Igos keso salatande. Rai kapataske sose mande branda baboria. Ieko se so selaminde. I compela shakata bonda skima salabaida. Anything that you have seen, anything that you have noticed that is not of God, you can reject it tonight. You can reject it tonight. You can stand against it tonight. You can call upon the name of the Lord tonight. Ensure you don't keep quiet. You are the prophet of your family. You are the prophet of your household. God will honor your voice. He will honor your voice. He will honor your voice. He will honor your voice tonight. I so compress que tabuli a cabasa salamatale. Shakropentos que sa silamantolia. He will honor your voice tonight. 
He will honor you tonight as you call upon him. There will be a ground for intervention. A ground for intervention. A ground for intervention. 